Escadela Cata, Embrace Cadilla Shabacata Prendegia, Shadigades, Cadeba, Mantebra, Kepro Shabicatos Cadilla Cata, Medebaratusia, the opening of the eyes, Ginas Cabadi Cataliata, Grantes Cadeba Dida Cata. Are you learning? Now, let me teach you something as we find a place to pray. someone is rising in this place tonight and by the spirit of the living God you are stepping into a dimension in the spirit where your life becomes a sign and a wonder in the name of Jesus Christ now listen the Bible talks about attaining unto the fullness of of the measure of the stature of Christ. Ephesians chapter 4, please. Give us from verse 10. The Bible says, He that descended is also the same that ascended far above the heavens, that he may feel all things. Verse 11. It says, And he gave unto some. Please pay attention now. You need to get what I'm about to show you. He gave unto some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, verse 12. Why did he give that? For the perfecting, the word perfecting means the maturing of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying, listen, of the body of Christ. And here is the standard that God has for every believer, verse 13. It says, till we all come, into the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect, mature, entire man. Then he says, unto the measure of the stature, help me please, of the fullness of Christ. That is, that is God's destiny as far as the making of the believer is concerned. That you can get to a point in the spirit where you can attain the fullness of Christ and manifest that. I've studied this for a while because in my mind I'm just wondering and saying how does a man become a reflection of the Christ in his fullness? Is that even possible? Can a man actually be a reflection of the fullness of Christ? I found out it is true. And I want to show you how right now. And then we'll pray. That a man can attain unto a state of maturity where your life becomes a wholesome reflection of Christ in his fullness to your world, to the earth. Now, in learning Jesus Christ and in reflecting him, please, I want you to listen. And if you're a man of God here, I want you to listen. If you are training people to become like Christ, these are the areas you must focus on. If these areas are not captured in your training, the people you are leading will never become like Christ. It doesn't matter what kind of spiritual activities you engage in. The formation of Christ in the saints has a formula. Are we together? There is something you have to guide the people into understanding, receiving, submitting to, and you will find out, not just one, two, three people, in mass, you will find out that ordinary people, weak people, sinners as we call them, will suddenly begin to transition in the spirit until you have the privilege of leading people who are truly like Christ. Can I show you this? Number one, the first area the first area you must focus on building in your attempts to build in people the image the character the formation of Christ the first area you have to focus on to mold in them is the nature of Christ the first dimension of the fullness of Christ that must be captured and reflected in people is the nature of Christ the nature of Christ the nature of Christ the people you are leading are not becoming like Jesus if his nature is not manifesting and if his nature is not reflecting in them notice the progression the primary assignment of any man of God in an attempt to build a people 
who are a reflection of Christ in an attempt to build true spiritual people is to partner with the Word and the Holy Spirit to see to it that the nature of the Christ is formed in them. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22. Now, what you know and you call the fruit of the Spirit. Now, when you read KJV, follow carefully. KJV makes it look like there are nine fruits. Love, joy, peace, patience, long-suffering. And there's nothing wrong if you see it that way. But classically speaking, the fruit of the Spirit, you notice it's not said fruits. It is one fruit. The epitome of the manifestation of the Christ is love. The nature of God at work in a man is the love nature. But that this nature expresses itself in all of these varieties. Joy, an expression of love. Peace, an expression of love. Patience, an expression of love. Gentleness. Gentleness is not a personality thing. It is the outworking of the spirit of the Christ in a yielded vessel. Listen, as you are looking at these things now, debunk respectfully from the lens of scripture that thought that this is my personality. I am an angry person. I am not, gel I'm not um, gentle. I am jealous. That's how we are. It's a lie. When you become a spiritual man, it is the journey to deadening every other thing that is not of the Christ. Are we together now? The nature of Christ. Everybody say the nature of Christ. That means I should be able to bring someone, Igbo, Yoruba, Hausa, South South, Middle Belt, Caribbean, American, European, group all of them together. If it is true they are spiritual men, they should look like relatives from the same family. Are we together? That you should have reduced like a viral load to its barest minimum the character of the flesh. When you look at them, please keep that scripture. This is what I should find in a spiritual man. Love. In all its expressions. Joy. You see that? Peace. Patience. I'm not a patient person, but I love God. Work on it. Work on it. Allow the Spirit of God live out the character of the Christ. All of these things, we saw it in the life of Jesus. And the Bible says, as the Father has sent me, so send I you. We always think of this in, with respect to power. But power issue will come. But the first area that you must labor with the Spirit to build is the character and the nature of Christ. Say it again, the nature of Christ. Gentleness, goodness, faith. Uh -huh. Verse 23. Meekness. You know what meekness is? Teachability. Teachability. The antidote to pride teachability, temperance. Another word for temperance is self-control. 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 He says, against such, there is no law. Listen to me. When you look at a Christian, a child of God, who has truly become a spiritual man, the first thing that should catch your attention is not tongues. The first thing that should catch your attention is not Rema. The first thing that should catch your attention, listen carefully, is not manifestations of power. The first thing that should catch your attention when you meet a real Christian is the energy that flows from his love life. Did you hear what I said? You see that we have a lot of work to do in our lives. How many of us say we are Christians and people stand and they want to run away? Because hate has an energy. You can feel it. We vent our anger in our sermons. We vent our anger as we deal with people in our offices. And we wrap up everything in the name of the Lord. No, sir. No, sir. The real proof that you are becoming a spiritual man, I am telling you this, with no excuses whatsoever, is that the love of Christ is growing within you. We say that after every service, and yet we do not believe it. Here's what we say. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the, we even say the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Huh? Be with us all. Amen. Love. 
love for God and love for people. Everybody say love. The, I'm saying this to you so that you will check your life right now. You came to church. And if you find out that the love of God is not growing, and if it's only God you love, you are lying. I hope you know that. Because the nature of God's love is both vertical and horizontal. If your love is only to God, the more you love him, the more you love those he died for. The more you love him, the more you love those he's trusting you with. You see, as a man of God, for instance, when you love the people God has sent to you, you don't need to be preached into not manipulating them. All of these things we try to address in the body of Christ, the real problem is that people do not love God and they do not love the people that God has sent to them. Because there are many, many things that live your life when love is there. Are we together? When you love God and you love the people he has sent to you, you will love them too much to deceive them. You will love them too much to manipulate them. You will love them too much to try and turn their minds for your own personal gain. No, this is beyond an issue of conscience. This is as a testament that the nature of God dwells in you. How many believers have love? When you begin to make teachings on love, most believers just think it's a feminine thing. Their mind goes straight to Valentine and they think love, love. Is it really this love thing? I want miracle and power. Is the reason why many people become cheated. Because love is not as weak as you think it is. That's what defeated Satan. People come to church and just for three hours they cannot tolerate the people sitting by their left and right three hours because hatred in them is boiling like water at 100 degrees waiting for who to pour on sit down the next time you push me I will slap you even though we're in church let me just tell you I'm not like that if you are tired of me go and look for another neighbor lift up your hand Jesus I love you and God is saying who are you deceiving I hope you are learning love the real missing ingredient because our world does not know the value of love love is not a feminine thing it's not just some weak emotional thing it is the very manifestation of the nature of God let me tell you it is beautiful to see a believer that really truly has the love of Christ there are things you will not do to your neighbor if you have love. You will not rejoice. I don't want to take you to 1 Corinthians 13 and show you what the Bible says about love. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and I have not love. Is that in your Bible? Though I offer my body to be born, say sacrifice. Uh -huh. Many people have the power and the energy for sacrifice. But the love component is not there. It says, though I have the gift of prophecy and I understand all mysteries, I've not met such a man. And though I have all knowledge and I have all faith to move mountains and I have not love, I am nothing. Verse 3, it says, though I bestow my goods to feed the poor, say charity, and I give my body to be born, matayadom, and I do not have love, it does not profit me anything. Then he says, love is patience. I wish we have New King James. Love is patient. Thank you. Suffers long. It is kind. It does not envy. Are you seeing now? So don't say I have love. Check whether you have envy. If envy is there, envy push part of love out to be there. Does not parade itself. Is not puffed up. Verse 5. Does not behave rudely does not seek its own self is not easily provoked or provoked think no evil you see that love is also a mentality issue verse 6 does not rejoice in iniquity but rejoices in the truth verse 7 bears all things believes all things it doesn't mean believe nonsense whatever they bring I hope you understand that now 
hopes all things, endures all things. This is the character of love. When the love of God is at work in your life and you're a true Christian, the first thing unbelievers want to see is not power. The first thing unbelievers want to see is love. Let me tell you the truth. I have studied church growth and I want to tell you something. This is not a pastor's conference. I don't know why God is going this way this night. But let me tell you one real secret to church growth. Love. You will not hear this thought in Bible in pastor's conferences. Rather, people can say, you know what, do this. Some of the biggest churches today in the world, with all due respect, are not necessarily power churches. He said, John did no miracles, but there was one testimony he had. He was an honest man. He had love within his heart. I've seen people who are very powerful and wonder why nobody wants to listen to them. Because human beings are not only looking for power. We have made power look like it is everything. No. There is a place for that as you'll be learning. But the first manifestation of the Christ-like dimension in a man is his nature. Never forget this. Before you seek power, seek to be like Christ by having his love and his character at work in you. Then your being powerful will be valuable. But it is a dangerous thing to pursue power without the nature of God first. And leaders, when you are mentoring your people, don't be in a hurry to just lay hands and impart people. No. Build the nature of Christ in them first. An anointed preacher who does not have the character of Christ is a dangerous person. I tell you this. It's the reason why there's a lot of misbehavior with the anointing. If I'm angry, I can speak a curse on you anyhow. That is not a power problem. It is a nature of God problem. One time the disciples saw some people and said, should we call down fire? Like Elijah, this, ah. Jesus looked at them and said, do you not know of whom you are of? No. This is another kind of spirit at work in you. Place your hand on your chest and pray one minute. I desire to have the love nature of Christ. Please pray. Sincerely from your heart. When the love of God is at work in you, you do not rejoice over the hurt and the pain of others. The body of Christ needs to grow out of this. We rejoice over the hurt and the pain of others. No. The Christ-like formation starts with his love. The love of Jesus. That you hear that someone lost a job in your office, you are not rejoicing and saying confirmation of prophecy. I saw it. No. No. You go back and you say, how, how will this man now? It is love that should lead us to prayer. It is love that should lead us to Bible study. It is love that should lead us to fasting. Any other thing that leads you aside from love is not of faith and it is sin. Love must be the reason why I desire growth in my life and in this ministry. If love is not there, the alternative will be competition. The alternative will be envy. The alternative will be jealousy. The alternative will be vain glory. Love is a purifier. It purifies motives. Number two. The first dimension of Christ that must be captured in any man to be spiritual is called his nature. The nature of Christ. Number two. The second dimension of Christ that must be captured in every believer to be called a spiritual man is called the mind or the wisdom of Christ. So the first is the nature of Christ, the love of Christ. The second dimension is called the mind of Christ. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. The mind of Christ. The mind of Christ. The mind of Christ, the wisdom. In fact, I think it's, um, is it 1 Corinthians 2, 7 or so? I hope I got that right. Give it to us, let's see. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and 7. Yes, the wisdom, the hidden wisdom that God ordained for our glory. I used to think when the Bible says the mind of Christ, it just means the brain of Christ. But the mind, the word mind of Christ there does not just mean 
the mentality of Christ is an overall capture of the wisdom of God one of the ways you manifest Christ is in wisdom there is something in the Bible called the wisdom of the just Luke 1 17 the wisdom of the just anybody who is in Christ there is a dimension of wisdom is called the mind of Christ transformation but a manifestation of wisdom if that wisdom is not captured in your life you are not a spiritual man it's like a general that does not know how to shoot a gun is that a real general how did he become a general even a young boy graduated from NDA who cannot shoot a gun will not graduate are we together a general that cannot shoot a gun a football superstar who has never scored when one penalty kick a policeman who has never made one arrest no there is a wisdom component that is required in life are we together listen when you believe this you will cry out for the nature of Christ to be more like him but then in addition to being like him you have to justify his nature by supplying to your world a dimension of wisdom they know can only be found in Christ are you seeing it now the first place it affects is your heart huh then it goes to your mind are you seeing that now then it goes to your hands power your heart purified you become like Christ in experience I shared with you here humorously a story many years ago went to look for instruments from a man of God and after the man was done preaching preached powerfully when we met the man he lambasted and insulted us use words that even a baby Christian should not use and at the end of it I remember it's very very young boys were on our way going back and I was thinking to myself what kind of a preacher is this I'm comparing in my mind two people one person who minutes ago was standing and shouting and the other person who stood and was insulting us and calling anything he can remember and I'm saying no this is this ought not to be so the nature of Christ and then the wisdom the wisdom of God I'm praying for you in the name of Jesus Christ that the dimension of wisdom that will begin to flow from your life today it will cause everybody to love God because of you yeah. that the wisdom that you will begin to command it will produce extraordinary results from your life yeah. you will gain mastery over the mysteries of the kingdom and you will engage them with such level of mastery your life will be an unending episode of kingdom exploits you believe that say amen it takes wisdom to build and excel in ministry. It takes wisdom to build and excel in career. It takes wisdom to maintain relationships. It takes wisdom to frontier and champion kingdom activities. Behind the mighty works you see that the saints command is the wisdom of God. Ordinary men fortified by divine wisdom wisdom that is not Sophia not just earthly wisdom wisdom that is not just sensual and scientific wisdom that is not just demonic or diabolic wisdom that comes from above pure potent carrying the ability to, to, to deliver results be tired of your non-productive nature as a believer and begin to contend for wisdom